Today I want to show you how to create a simple multiplayer game with the help of Socket IO, IOGS, some HTML5 and as a yummy I will use fresh ECMAScript 2015 syntax with my IOGS on the server side just to start using this all these nice features that we all have been hearing so much about. Okay, so Right now on the screen, you'll see our intermediate results that we want to achieve in a couple of videos. That's as simple as possible game that I could imagine. This is rock, paper, scissors and two clients are connected to my socket IO servers. Now they can play. This guy can select paper. The other one can select rock and obviously paper wins because paper rubs rocks. And now scissors and let's say rock. This time the guy on the right will win because, well, rock crushes scissors. And they can continue to move on and on and on in, in the same way. This game is super simple, but it already shows all those game mechanics like matching player together. Once two players are in the server, they will automatically go and start playing the game. Later, we can introduce more interesting mechanics like challenges, like selecting the one that you want to play against. But right now that will already work. Besides, we have the turns, we have the turn validation. So if I try to click like rock twice, you select it already. It will not let me select something else if I have selected rock already. And it also has the win-lose condition. So once both players finish the round, it will tell who won, who lost. And based on this simple mechanics, you can make any game that you like on your own that uses the same turn-based idea. It's, it's relatively simple, right? So let's start with the basics. And before we dive and start with this video, I'll tell a couple of words of why I have chosen this particular technology stack. So IOGS, why IOGS and not Node.js? There is a single reason why I used IOGS instead of Node. And this is ECMAScript 2015 syntax. I want to start using it today already without the hassle of transpilers, without adding more to my workflow. And Node.js is a little bit more conservative. So the version of V8 that that is a JavaScript engine inside Node.js, it's, it's relatively old compared to what is in IOGS. It's very stable, it's super stable, no questions here, but it's slightly older than in IOGS. So IOGS supports more fresh features than Node.js for price, of course. And for this tutorial, I want to use IOGS. If you're watching this tutorial in half a year from now, there is a high chance that Node.js already supports all these features. So give it a try. If you really like Node, it might actually work or Give it a go with IOGS and try it with IOGS, right? So let's start and jump right into the project. First, let's set, shut down the servers that I used for demo. Now let's jump to the project. I've got a folder here and I've created a very basic project structure. I've got three files in my project, which is index.html. I don't want guys to show you for a couple of minutes how to write HTML code. I fully trust that you can write a markup like this. This is a basic markup to show the chat screen. Doesn't even have CSS rules yet applied. So that's, that's what I will be working with. A simple and ugly interface. And it has a single, let me put it side by side. It has a single script added to the page client JS. And that's my client side JavaScript for, uh, code. It is empty now, absolutely empty. Server JS also empty. And that will be our IO JS or Node JS code that we will use to run our server. And from this point on, we are ready to start. By the way, if you want this project structure, if you don't want to replicate it yourself, there is a GitHub link at the bottom of video or in the comments, check it out and you can uh, get this code with exactly this structure, exactly this starting point to follow up with the tutorial. So feel free to pause now, get the code and unpause when you're ready to proceed or just watch the video. It's quite simple. So the first thing that I want to do here is to install the modules that I will need for this project. So I'll call npm install, I'll add the flag save just to save the references to dependencies in my package JSON file. So I want express, express is the web application framework and socket IO, which is a real time connection framework. I'll install those in a couple of minutes actually a couple of seconds. And as you see, I've got a bunch of errors here, right in my console, those red lines look ugly and some uh, cryptic code in C++. So what what is that? Those are compilation errors that those are minor incompatibilities between the 
IOGS, which is super fresh, and some of the dependencies of Socket IO. Will that stop Socket IO from working? No, it will not. For now, it will just work. So it is absolutely safe to ignore it for the sake of tutorial later. I think that will, will, will be gone in a couple of months. So let me clear the screen and let me start with my project. The first goal of this tutorial, the first thing that I want to do today in this video is to do the basic handshake between the client and the server, make sure that I can use my IOGS sexy ECMAScript 2015 syntax on the server. On the client, by the way, I'll have to stick with the old syntax for now. So my first goal is to say hello whenever I'm connected to the server. And it's already a good message because I will know that connection has happened properly. This is, will be my proof of concept, the early feedback that I can get from my client and server connection. Okay, so let's start with the client, right? So I have the unordered list here, which will hold my chat messages. So if I add the list item here, hello, something like this, you'll see it appearing in the chat window, right? The one the version that I showed at the beginning of this video was styled with CSS. So we add that polishing that last layer of finish a little bit later, right now, we'll start with the bare version just to focus on JavaScript, not on fancy things. So what I have to do whenever I will receive a message from the server, I want to append in this style, add the list item to this list. And I'll create a function for that right now in my client JS file. So I'll call the function on message. And on message will receive a text that I need to append. Now I'll take the list with document get element by ID the old school DOM API, if you're using jQuery or any sort of library to uh, save your life from typing those long function names, feel free to use it. In this tutorial, I just want to stick to as minimal setup as possible. So I'm using just the plain DOM API that doesn't require any libraries at all. This is chat. Now I need to create a new element that I want to append to this list element equals. So I'll create it, create element. And this element will be a list item. Finally, I want to put the text inside of this element. And I'll do it with a help of a field called inner HTML. I'll just put text there. Finally, I've got the element, I've got the list. Now we need to marry them, we need to append an element to the list. List, append child element. And that's pretty much all the four lines of JavaScript that I need to start typing my messages. So let's try on message. Hi. And just to make sure let's type another one. I am connected. Not really connected yet. But just to see how it will look. Yep. So this code works. I have some JavaScript on client side right now. Now I need to make sure that my files are served not from the file system, but from proper web server, because otherwise, mm, I don't think that I will be able to establish proper connection, right? So I want to serve it from localhost 8080 instead of the from file system. And what I will do to do that first, I'll clean up this small code that I have written just to test things. I'll go to the server side and here I can start using my ECMAScript 2015 syntax. So I have to make sure that I'm in a strict mode because those features that I'm going to use like block scoped variables let are only available in a strict mode. So I'll require the HTTP module require HTTP. By the way, IOGS is based fully on Node.js. So everything that works when with Node will work with IO. So all this syntax, everything that you learned about Node.js that works, right? So you can think about it as the next version of Node, just with a different name. Okay, we've got HTTP. Now we need Express. Express is the web app framework that will make our life easier. So I'll require Express. Okay, now, I want to create an application for Express. So I'll call it app. It's by convention, the default name that how you will call the web app, right? So app will be the application that we will configure to do all those fancy things later. But right now it will do just nothing, we need some sort of application to start with otherwise, our server will well just do nothing. Now, what I want to do is create an HTTP server from the HTTP module and the application. 
So the server will be HTTP create server. And I'll pass app as the listener, right? So app will be responding to HTTP requests to this server, right? And it will uh, build the responses. So the final thing that I will need to do is to start listening to the port. So server listen will bind that server to a port. Let's pick 880. Looks good. And finally, once the server is ready, it can call a function, a listener, just to say that I am ready to receive connections. And here I will start using the arrow function syntax. So I'll use the syntax to say that console.log ready to work, right? So let's see if this works. By the way, this syntax is, uh, is almost the same as you would write a function here. But see, it just takes one line, not three lines as you would usually use with your function syntax. Okay, now let's see if that works. Once again, IOGS. Now I have to add this flag harmony arrow functions. Why do I need this flag before I run my server JS? Well, harmony arrow functions are still considered as not stable feature. So to enable this feature, you kind of have to tell, I know what I'm doing, I am taking this risk, so I want to enable this syntax. The syntax itself, it made its way to standard, so it will soon become stable. Just give it a try, try it without this flag. If it works, just forget about it, don't put it. If it doesn't work, still put the flag on and uh, this way you will make the syntax work. I, I, I truly believe that it will soon become a stable feature because it's one of the most useful syntax sugar features from ECMAScript 2015 from my perspective at least. Okay, let's start it ready to work. And it is empty server it does nothing, but at least it proves that our syntax with all those lets and arrow functions, it is working. And I could bind the server to 8080. It's also important. So the server that does nothing is already there. Now we want to add another feature to the server to serve the client side files to the browser, right? So instead of running them from file system like this file, we want to run it from HTTP localhost. And to do that, I'll use the app, which is our web app, Express. And Express has a great feature called express.static. Express static is a middleware. Think of it as a module that can serve the files from a given folder for the requests, right? So I will just need to tell where to serve it from. My folder is client and it is relative to my project. So the path to my project is available through a dir name variable like this. But also I don't want to serve the project itself. I want to serve a particular folder inside of a project. I want to serve a client folder. So like that, I'm telling Express, please make sure that whatever is inside of this folder can be served through HTTP port that I opened. Let's save it, rerun our server. I actually can start running it from IDE, I guess. And let's test what we will see if we go to localhost 8080. Hey, it's old server. I don't trust you here. Yeah. Refreshed and here's our new small, uh, a little bit, a little bit empty, a little bit flat interface, but still already served through the through HTTP. Now the last part, we want to make an actual handshake, we want to make sure that the server can say hello to the client with the help of socket IO. And that will be a good start for our future game. So what we'll do here, on the server side, we have only initialized Express application. Now we also need to initialize a socket IO server. So let I'll create socket IO here. Require socket IO. Now all I need to do to initialize the server is to create a variable called IO. Well, it's also kind of a convention. So all the socket IO servers are called IO. You will see it on all documentation, all the samples, just IO. I'll call socket IO with, I'll pass the server that I will use for serving files. So it needs an HTTP server to start, right? So this way I initialize the server and I am ready to start giving the client some sort of, well, of messages, right? I can start messaging. 
I'll add a listener to IO. And I add a listener with a help of on function. So on connection, meaning when somebody connected to us, I can create a function, arrow function again here. And whenever somebody is connected, I will get a socket object. This object acts act as a proxy to my client, right? I can write something to socket, I can emit messages there, and they will magically appear on the client side. Of course, not magically through web sockets or through Ajax long pole, but it will be all transparent to you. You don't have to care about transports. So here I can say just sock.emit. And what I will emit, I will emit a message of type msg, that will be my plain message in my application. Once again, that's not a magic string, that's not predefined function or something, just msg. And I'll type hello here. Now, the server is ready, whenever someone will connect, it will emit to each and every user message hello. Now we need to make sure that we can get that message from the client side. Let's by the way, double check if our server is still working. Restart it, ready to work, no errors, well, looks good. So now let's adjust our client. On the client side, we will also use the same, same object called IO, right? But to get this object, we need to add another JavaScript file to our index.html. And I'll add another script tag, source is socket.io socket.io.js and now if you look carefully you will not find this file in the project so how it works where does it come from the trick is that socket.io is married with the http server and it will intersect the uh, call for this file and it will serve it even not having the file on the file system. So it will just work. If the socket IO is enabled on the server, this bus will return the JavaScript, the client side JavaScript for a browser. So now we will have an object called IO and we can create a socket, which is a connection to server, just invoking of IO like a function like this. Now we will connect to the server and whenever a socket will receive a message, we can do something about it. So sock, whenever you receive a message of type msg, msg, what I want to do with this message? Firstly, what this message will have? This message will have a text. So what I can do, I can reuse my function on message and just add this text to the chat window on message like this. So now my client is ready to receive messages, my server is sending messages whenever the client is connected. And I'm in a good shape to test this whole thing together. So let's restart the server, ready to work. I actually should put some more uh, information here, like the port number that I'm listening to. Ready to work is kind of dry. And here, what I'll do, I'll refresh the page. And yes, I've got the hello server saying hello to me. That means that I have connected successfully. And now I can exchange messages between the client and the server, which is a great start for our socket IO application. So what I'll do now, I will save this code and add a tag to git so that in next video, you can start exactly from this point. And in the next video, I'll show how to organize a simple chat and how to create a match between two players. So stay tuned. It's going to be fun. We'll create a nice game together with socket IO, IOGS and ECMAScript 2015. Thank you for watching.